Hey, Thomas from Field Tennis. We're continuing with the Tennis at Home series. Today we're looking at the two-handed backhand. So these workouts can be done at home or somewhere outside or even before you start uh, your tennis session. I do that a lot with juniors. And the purpose of these workouts is to make sure that all the biomechanical fundamentals are in place and that you are moving your body correctly. So this is not about running around and sweating. This is more about making sure that everything is working as it's supposed to work. So again, in the first part, you can follow along. And in the second part, I will explain more about each exercise. All right, so you don't need any special warm up for this workout. But what I like to do with players is to have them loosen up. So we can do a little loosening up exercise like this today. We're not going to do the reset exercise, but I want you to try this exercise where you're rotating your body and you let your arms swing around, flail around. So try to loosen up your arms and let them go. So don't go like this, but let them go. And then always initiate your body rotations. So you're mostly using that going from your pelvis before your arms come to the end of the swing. So don't wait for the end of the swing and go, but swing your arms and before your arms get to the end of the swing, you go and your arms lag and then they swing like this. All right, second exercise. We're going to engage our pelvis a little bit. You can use the racket and we're going to do this. The reason why we use the racket here is that we can isolate hip pelvis, that we feel it. So now I'm doing for two-handed backhand, I'm a right-hander, so I'm doing it on the left side in a neutral stance. So I will do this a little bit to wake up my hips pelvis. Again, if you can't isolate, then you would move like this. So I want to isolate a little bit and then we'll repeat on the stairs. You can also try open stance so you just go up like 10 times but we'll quickly do something on the stairs all right uh, since we're here at the stairs we can engage the core a little bit core is very important one of the most common mistakes on the two-handed backhand is that players go with the upper body before they go with the lower body that means usually core is not engaged so you can do a russian twist here or you can do an exercise a little bit like this a bicycle just <laughs> that you feel that you engage your core all right now we can go on the stairs we use the stairs to engage the legs to activate the legs because we want to engage our body from the ground up so we're going on the stairs and we go like this Note how I shorten the backswing and the follow-through because I want my attention to be down. I don't want my attention to be up here. I want it here. You can also do like this. You step. And I want to feel my pelvis. I feel something is here. Okay. And go and then. Okay, next one. And uh -huh, engage the pelvis. Okay, I feel I have pelvis. I feel I can move the pelvis. I can coil, uncoil. We go one more. Now we just connect. All right, now we're going to try open stance. So we're going to go with the left Can twist a little bit. Okay. I feel my core up, left, up, left, up, left, up. So again, don't pay too much attention to your arms. Just bring your focus down to the legs. Feel very stable, very balanced when you plant your foot. If you don't feel balanced and you go like this, then you have to go slower. So if you keep losing balance, if you're going like this, then slow down, really put your foot well on the stair 
go and hold balance. So if you go like this and like this, that's not good. You, it means you're losing balance and catching yourself. You must feel that you can hold. All right, one more. Left, 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 left. Okay, now that the lower body is activated, we can start with a little uh, weight transfers and trying to feel the ground. So, this is the exercise. We start with a neutral stance. We're just transferring weight from back foot to front foot. So this is just first exercise, then we're going to expand a little bit. So just start with this. As you can see, I'm not engaging my arms. I'm just holding my racket here nice and gently. And I'm just letting my arms go how they want to go. So I'm not engaging my arms in any way. I'm just holding it here. Our attention is down here and here. That's why we activated the core and the, the pelvis that you feel that this side is coming in. So now we do a little bit with this. Okay, let's shift to open stance. So for now, I just want you to go up. As you can see, I'm pressing down. No special follow through, no special backswing. Just stay upright, don't be like this. Keep looking forward. You can do a little step, a little step out from ready use the leg and twist the pelvis like this Hop. okay now we go back to neutral now we start shifting shift your front foot there are many positions in which you can play but that's why it's important that you feel it's the same rhythm whether you step here or you step here or you step here is the same rhythm, same connection between lower body and upper body, or same coordination between the back swing and step and weight transfer. All right. Now we can also do a little movement in open stance. So as you will see, we can play open stance in two ways. One is we go this way, hop, just stand on one leg, just do like this. Then you come back, then you do a cross like this and up, 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 up. So sometimes you play more off the left leg for right handers. Sometimes there's a weight transfer going on from this leg to this leg. There's a weight transfer going on as I'm hitting. So as you can see there, little variations because I'm playing in both occasions in open stance but this time it's more leg and up and this time it's more weight transfer I finish on this leg but when I finish the stroke here I finish on this leg so I go here up so here in reality the weight transfer would be delayed then now I would go so if I were to play I go hop so this one is a delayed weight transfer and this one is kind of immediate. Up, up, up. So as you can see, I'm used to neutral stance on my back end. So my body wanted to position in this position. So it's good for your awareness that you pay attention. You see, up, up. For the next exercise, we're going to try and loosen up the wrist. Very common mistake for players is that they just hold the racket like this, very strong with a death grip. They just go back and forth. But in reality, something has to happen here. So we're just doing little number eights. I want you to let your racket go around like this. But uh, do not loosen up your wrist so much that you don't hold the racket well, so that there's like space between the, your hand and the racket. So there should be no space. So you need to hold the racket, but you need to loosen up your wrists. So from this side, you can see I'm doing a little number eight here as an exercise. 
just to get this little movement and you see if I time my pelvis rotation right if I time it right then the racket falls behind and then from here I get out an acceleration of the wrists so your goal is to try and find this timing this coordination between pelvis rotation twist and letting your wrists lag so it's the same principle as on the forehand as I'm here and I go the wrist legs even if I go here I go with my body and this one goes like this or if I go here it goes like this hop hop so now we just focus on this little part so from this side You see I just follow a number eight you can even put two rackets on the ground like this one like this and one like this that you see that number eight that you visualize better and you want to you see let your wrists move all right so now for the last move of the exercise we're just gonna add little arm extension so we are not gonna go over the shoulder we're just gonna go like this so now we're trying to put everything together I am very stable I transfer weight I feel pelvis rotation I feel wrists doing something and then I extend and I hold balance so the racket just vertical like this So now I can combine a little bit with weight shifts. So racket just vertical here. Now try open stance. We just go here, here, up. We go here, up. Use the left leg up when you finish you can just keep the toe on the ground like this up 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 and now you can combine with the movements that we did one cross one two up one two up one two up one two do you feel the wrists letting go here don't be too tight let them fall behind rotate let them fall rotate but do not release the grip you must hold the racket you must not do like this always hold the racket you must find a way to loosen up your wrists a little bit but still hold the racket up. all right so this concludes part one where we just did the workout so of course you can extend it a bit longer but these are the steps I would go through to make sure that all the body parts are engaged in the right way so now if we just pay attention a little bit to a few things I've mentioned a few on the forehand when it comes to weight transfer so that you don't transfer weight with going back and forward but as you go back you maintain forward posture so not back forward but rotation so if you're here you go like this rotation and you step you don't go back forward it will waste time and you will be off balance so you always go like this hop so now you see I want to go forward so if you're just in this position and you're going back and forth when I go back I maintain forward posture and I press when I press down I want to go through my heel and really stabilize so your weight must not go over there on the balls of your feet otherwise you would lose balance so just here very stable one of the most common mistakes on the two-handed backhand is that the upper body goes before the lower body so the player goes like this so their hip stays here 
I go like this. So it's made of two parts. One is engaging the wrong body part at the wrong time, and the other one is imagining the stroke too much sideways. So the player is thinking they have to hit like this. But you must start to unwind as you're hitting the stroke so that you're something like this. So you are, you are, in, you are transitioning into forward. You are not sideways as you are hitting. You see my hips are pointing to the side. So that's why it's very important that you do pelvis activation exercises because in your normal back and if you're doing it wrong nothing happens with the pelvis with the hips so the player would go like this they would go sideways and just engage upper body and this pelvis would stay here so very very common so very important that you try to feel this uh -huh, lower body first So that's why we do the exercises for hip pelvis activation to make sure that the player feels it, that you know, oh, I can do something here, that you don't think backhand is like this. But you have to unwind from the ground up, like in a spiral you go up. So this part engages before this part, or at least they go together but not this one first, that's an emergency. So yeah, it's possible if the player is in some kind of emergency, then of course they will go like this, but you need to begin down here. And another very common mistake on the two-handed backhand is not doing anything with the wrists. So players hold the racket very tight, very strong. So they go in the backhand, they just hold the racket here and then they go forward very strongly from the arms and nothing happens here and there's no pop there's no spin there's no ball control just kind of a pushed stroke so that's why we do these little exercises to loosen up the wrist for the player to feel a bit an exaggerated way of how to move the wrist so of course this is an exaggeration but most exercises are exaggerations so that you can feel it. So I'm sure there's a player somewhere on ATP or male or female that would go a bit like this on the back end. So they're just exaggerating this process in the same way as players do it on the forehand. So they keep the racket head more forward so that they get a better slap. So in physics or biomechanics, the same principle would apply here. So it's just that players have a bit more steady racket. They don't use that so much. They either go here or they go down. So again, what's important is that something is happening here, that you allow your wrists to, to go through certain motions. And in time, you're going to feel how to connect the pelvis rotation with the wrist leg. So wrist leg happens automatically if you don't do anything yet with your wrists, your arms, and you go with the lower body, see? So this would be on the backhand side or, or like this on the forehand side. Or from this side, let's say I just hold the racket here like this. If I go with the lower body, you can see that the racket head goes back a bit and then I go. So we want to use this principle, same on this side. I go here, and as the racket is going slowly backwards, I engage lower body, I start unwinding. Now the racket legs creates a stretch here in the forearm, and then we get a little slap out of this, and then we control the ball with an extension. So the danger of this is if the player feels too much slapping, then they, they do like this. So they get really good power, so it's like baseball. They get really good power, but they can't control direction well. So a tennis stroke is a combination of power and, and control. So the way we get control is that we 
extend our arms for a basic fundamental stroke. So we get a little slap here and extension for directions. There, like bowling. There, there. Same forehand. We go here, here, here. So I hope you enjoy this little workout for the two-handed backhand that you can do at home or in some space that you have. Again, the purpose of this workout is to help you improve your technique if you have some technical flaws. I've mentioned the most common ones, so no pelvis rotation, nothing happening with the hands, with the wrists. So if you repeat these exercises often, I'm quite sure you're going to play much better once you get on the courts. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.